Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. I'm your host, Jerron Harrington. Back to answer another video, and today we're going to be continuing Neon Genesis Evangelion, the Star of Hope, based on the Heroes of the Morphin Grid series as we get into Part 6. Now, just to let you guys know, we are nearing the end of this series. After Part 6, we only have two more parts to go, and that will basically conclude this saga as a whole until we get to the much-awaited team-up that will be coming down the road. Now, despite the series being up and down in terms of its popularity and everything else as a whole, I do want to genuinely say thank you to everyone who has supported this as a whole. And as we're approaching the end, I can say that it's truly been fun to do this particular series as it's given me a chance to rewatch Neon Genesis Evangelion and go through everything. And it's a bit kind of sad as we're now approaching the end. I kind of get like this when we're approaching the end of a series as a whole also do want to say going into this week we're going to try to do something a little bit different you know um i've been doing a lot of thinking recently going through some things and i've been wondering if maybe i should try to put out more content you know so i'm going to be asking you guys do you guys want more content more than just one video a day how about two videos a day you know if you guys can handle that sort of thing not just what if videos but discussion videos things of that nature everything on the grand scheme of things just to see how you guys are feeling because i feel like now that we're approaching the new year i really want to put my best foot forward and just grind and get out this content grow this channel grow the core grow the brand grow everything as a whole because like i always say i can't do it without you guys we're on the road to 2k and beyond so that's just something to think about heading into the new year so don't be shocked if later on today you get another video or if you know we do some more going forward but anyway as we're going to be going into the new year we're just going to be trying to do some new things so just keep that in mind but anyway we're going to get into today's video so as always sit back relax and enjoy the show Jason would go to the wedding along with Misato. Jason feeling a bit out of his element as he didn't know anyone there. After all, he was from an entirely different world, so how could he know anyone there in the first place outside of Misato? Along with Ritsuko and Kaji who joined them soon after, the four adults all sitting at the table. Ritsuko would tease Misato a little bit about bringing Jason as her date, and Kaji would play along in the joke as well. Jason becoming a bit nervous at it all as he didn't really think too much about it. Although it never really dawned on him just how old he had actually gotten all the years that had gone by. So, it's a lovely evening we're having here. Tell me, Jason, how is Miss Sato, you know? Um, in what way are you asking? Oh, come on now, we're all adults here. You know, how's Miss Sato when it comes to the bedroom? Jason would choke on some of his wine as Miss Sato would give Kaji an angry glare as she didn't like to be teased in such a way. In the meantime, as the adults were enjoying their evening together, Shinji, on the other hand, would be spending his time with his father. The two had gone to the gravesite of his mother. This was something they normally did together, but when Shinji ran away, they hadn't done so in over three years. As the two stood in front of the grave, Shinji felt rather different than before 
All that time he had spent meditating with Jason and controlling himself, it allowed him to speak more clearly as he and his father stood together at the gravesite of their late mother and the late wife respectively. Father, yes son, I know that I can't take back the things that I have done. To be honest, I felt a lot of emotions towards you when mother was gone. A lot of things that we probably won't. I guess when I'm... What I'm trying to say is, I don't understand you. I'll never understand you. Maybe that's just my fate in life, but I like to think that maybe you aren't a bad person. You've just made mistakes along the way. Shinji, I've done the things that I've done and I cannot take them back. If you were expecting the perfect father, then I do apologize for not living up to your expectations of me. And me as a son. Maybe we've both missed the mark in that regard, but still, I want to believe that things can get better. At least, that's the hope I have. We can only go ahead in the futures that we build for ourselves, son. Do not forget that. If there is something in life that you truly want, then you must reach out for it with your own hands. Very well. Father, I don't completely understand what you do or why you do the things that you do. And I'd be lying if I said that I enjoy every bit of our encounters together, but if you can please just tell me one thing, one thing, Father. And what is that, my son? Are we on the same side, Father? Are we fighting for the same thing? Hmm. I like to believe that we fight for the future of mankind. I believe we share in that fight. And by some chance, if we were ever to be enemies, would Shinji, if the day should ever come when you and I must face against one another as enemies, I do not relish that thought. But if it should ever come to that, we must do what we have to do. But know that you and I, we will never change. You will always be my son, just as I will always be your father. Very well. Shinji would get a call on his communicator of a few stray cogs in the lower south side of Tokyo 3, as Gendo Ikari had to go to attend to some other matters. Shinji would morph into a Zeo Ranger form red as he would be given a hover bike by Nerve to go out as soon as possible. His father wishing him good luck as the two went their separate ways. Before leaving, Shinji would turn to his father one last time and yell out to him, telling him that he was happy that the two of them could have time together. And Gendo would nod in assurance that he were pleased with the time he could spend with his son as well. The two going their separate ways, Gendo back to his headquarters and Shinji off to deal with some of the cogs. Not too long after, Shinji would eventually return home, where Asuka would have been waiting all day as she had gotten the same alert but there weren't too many but she was told to be on standby. She was surprised to hear that Shinji took care of it all by himself. Of course, Asuka wasn't always the one to open up when it came to emotions, but at the same time, she was a bit conflicted when it came to Shinji. 
she couldn't really explain it, but she had somehow gotten over her crush of Kaji. Of course, she still looked up to and admired him, but at the same time, there was just something about Shinji that truly captivated her and truly caught her attention as the two of them were home alone for some time. She would ask how his day was and he would explain that he was alright as he went to go take a shower and clear his mind. Once he was out, she asked if he wanted to walk around. Not do much, but just to go for a walk. Shinji really didn't see anything by it, so he agreed. And the two went out that evening for a nice evening stroll. Walking around the park and even stopping to get some ice cream as... The sun was beginning to set. In the meantime, at the after party of the wedding, Kaji and Jason had spent some time talking and getting to know one another, and Jason could see that Kaji was a nice guy, if a bit unorthodox here and there, as he told him about his passion for growing watermelons and making a few offhand comments at Miss Sato, which caused her to blush and hit him upside the head a few times. Ultimately, though, as the night grew on, everyone was starting to go their separate ways and leave. Jason, when he was talking, would tell a little bit of the world he had come from and his life as a Power Ranger. Ritsuko being fascinated at hearing about the Ranger technology and Kaji being in awe of what Jason had done, a real-life superhero. Misato couldn't help but feel proud hearing about Jason and his exploits hearing about all of the amazing adventures that he had gone on over the years and leading up to his time now. Of course, they did hear about the tragedy that befell the Zeo Rangers when Lord Draken arrived, and he could never get the image out of his head of his best friend Tommy being killed by another Tommy. The whole idea of the multiverse was more than what he could comprehend, but and still they tried to make sense of it all the same. Jason would only go on to talk about the kids and their training as well, and about how proud he was about how far they had all come. Everyone was growing and changing for the better, and Misato couldn't help but be pleased with this. Kaji would make the offhand comment that Jason and Misato acted like parents to a group of super-powered teenagers causing the two of them to blush mildly. Eventually, as the night grew on, Kaji decided to leave, along with Ritsuko giving her a ride back home. Of course, Ritsuko was a bit shocked that Kaji didn't stay, but he only ushered her along as Jason and Misato were left alone. And you're not going to stay either? Oh no, I don't really think I have the guts to do that. But don't you and Miss... That was in the past, Ritsuko. Besides, I'm beginning to think that maybe he's really what she needs right now. And what makes you so sure about that? Well, don't get me wrong. I still have love for her deep within my heart. That much hasn't changed, but... In the end of the day, it's really just a matter of me, well, wanting to give her the space that she deserves. Plus, after everything she's been through, I'd like to imagine that if she can find one decent guy in this world, then maybe that can be what saves her shattered heart. The two would leave as Misato and Jason would walk along the city streets before heading home. Jason carried her as she wasn't really used to wearing heels all that much, causing her to get a few blisters as he carried her. She was shocked to see just how strong his arms were when he held her. As they continued to walk, Misato would slowly break down as she told more about her backstory to Jason letting free her own insecurities and her own doubts. However, Jason would reassure her that everything was fine, noting that she hadn't come as far as she did because 
she wasn't capable, but rather because deep down, she were one of the most capable women that he had ever met, and that if things had been different, then he would have gladly have made her a ranger as well. The two eventually made it back home. As they came inside, they would see Shinji and Asuka both passed out on the couch as a movie was playing. The two under the same blanket. The two older adults couldn't help but smile to see that the young ones were getting along. Although hopefully they weren't getting along too well. After all, there were things that you just had to go through in age before you reached those certain points. The next day, Toji would go off to see his sister in the hospital. Her situation was improving, but still, he always made sure to follow and see her diligently. As he was on his way, Jason would come by and walk with him for a little bit. After all, Jason was always keen to check on all of his students. After all, he was their sensei, and he was the one who was training them, but he always made sure to take a personal interest in everything that they liked, whether it would be following with Toji and doing some weightlifting, or going out to a shooting range with Kinsuke, or just enjoying music with Shinji. He always would go shopping with Asuka if she wanted to, and the girl often had a big thrill for shopping. He would reach out to Ray, and Ray would simply like to look out in clear views and watch the scenery all around. Or they would find their own ins and outs of things to do. But even she was starting to open up a little bit as well. Meanwhile, Nerve Headquarters had their own situation to deal with. As they were waiting for the arrival of Ava Unit 3. It due to one of the experimentations that had taken place at the second headquarters. It caused its complete destruction. And now the unit was being moved from the United States to Japan. In the meantime, they began experimenting with the dummy plug, based on the data that they had collected from the Evangelion pilots. The dummy plug was meant to serve as a backup in the event that they could no longer have a pilot then the dummy plug would work in response to the memories and the reflexes gained from the data used from an actual pilot. In a sense, it could work and move on its own, at the command of anyone who was controlling it. Among many of the other information that had been gathered, Misato would also be informed of the fourth child that had been selected to be the pilot of Ava Unit 3. She would be shocked along with many of the others to learn that the fourth child was none other than Toji, the Green Zeo Ranger. Of course, she couldn't possibly bear the idea of telling him the news, but at the very least, it was a good thing that he were friends with everyone else. Had they not been, then there was no telling how hard this situation could be for them. After school, the five rangers would all gather together in the briefing hall, not sure what news Misato had to tell them. Jason already knew ahead of time, so he made sure that he was there, along with Ritsuko. As Misato took the floor, she would tell them all of the news, of how Toji was now going to be the fourth child. Everyone's jaws would be opened, except for Ray, who remained calm and composed. Toji couldn't believe it. He had actually been selected. Wait, I'm going to pilot an Evangelion? Mm-hmm. Not at Ritsuko. That's why you've been selected as the fourth child. Oh, man. I can't believe he qualified. I wanted to have an Evangelion of my own, too. Hey, can't Kinsuke take it? I mean, he seems to really want it. That's not really how it works here, Toji. You've been chosen because you meet the most specific qualifications. But there's no need to worry about it. It doesn't stop you from your ranger duties, so there's nothing to truly worry about. Jason would put his hand on Toji's shoulder. There's no need to worry. You're not alone in this. We're all going to be with you no matter what, and we don't leave any ranger behind. 
remember that. Toji would nod, feeling reassured as everyone smiled at him. Asuka was a bit nerved, but even she had grown to have a soft side and she couldn't say she hated any of her comrades. Or at the very least, she wouldn't want anything bad to happen to them at any given time. Even though Toji was a bit nervous, having everyone by his side was a nice reassurance at least. And Kensuke did get to see things on the bright side. If everyone had to use their Evangelion at any given time, if they already formed the Super Zeo Zord, then he could pilot that all by himself if it came down to it. Or he could take a trip and ride in Pyramidus with him. Kinsuke getting the chance to check out all of the weapons and artillery in the Zord by itself without having to worry about anyone else around was more than enough of a reward for him. Although he hoped he could potentially have his own Evangelion someday. At least, that was the idea. Although deep down, Misato hoped that that wouldn't be the case at all. After everyone was brief and everyone was left to their own devices, Shinji had decided to go off on his own for a little bit to think about things, saying that he would catch up with Asuka back at home in a little while. While she was a little bit worried, she didn't let it show as she told him not to be late as he was cooking dinner that night. In the meantime, Jason and Misato would be following Kaji as he made his way down to a lower bunker in Nerve. Jason knew Miss, what Misato had to do, but he warned her not to be reckless and that if anything happened, he would watch out for her. As they followed behind, Kaji pulled out a key card before swiping it. He would feel a gun pressed to the back of his head. So, seems you finally found me, hey Miss Sato? Well, Kaji, it's not as if I wanted to find you under these circumstances. And I see you brought your boyfriend. <clears throat> he is not my boyfriend! <sighs> but are you actually going to speak and tell me what you're really doing here? Huh? Because the way I see it, there have been two Kajis this whole time. The Kaji of my past and... And the Kaji who was sent here to investigate Nerve? Are you working for the Magistrate? Hmm. <laughs> the Magistrate doesn't exist, Miss Sato. What exactly do you mean by that? All of those supposed other organizations? They don't exist. They're all under Nerve. Nerve's been pulling the strings this whole time. Are you serious? But of course. What? Is that something else that Nerve hasn't been telling you? There are a lot of things they haven't been telling me. And you, Jason? You don't seem all too surprised by this. <laughs> well, when you've been alive as long as I have, you learn to pick up on certain things. If I'm being entirely honest, I haven't trusted Nerve since the second I got here. In fact, if it wasn't for Shinji and the others, I would have been on my own a long time ago. Ah, I see. Well, it's nice to see that we're all level-headed here. That doesn't explain anything. So just tell me, what exactly are you doing here in the first place? Well, it seems as though now there's no point in hiding the truth, so this is why. He would swipe the key card as the doors would open, revealing what was hidden from Misato and Jason. Up on a large red cross, they saw the upper half of what appeared to be an angel. Its appearance was completely white with a weird upside down purple triangle with appeared to have seven eyes, four on one side and three on the other as trails of blood came from its lower half, as it appeared to be nailed. Oh my god! What is that thing? What you're seeing is Adam. The result of the second impact. The first angel. So that's it then, huh? Hmm. You seem to be as perceptive as ever, Jason. 
well, it wasn't really that hard to figure out the first time. The angels have been attacking specifically Nerd for all this time, but this is what it appears to be that they're after. Not just the angels, but also that machine empire you've been telling us so much about. I have reason to suspect that if the angels could figure out what's underneath here, then I have reason to believe that the machines have as well. And being ones with technology, what do you think? Well, Jason, you're the ranger expert. Why do you think the machine empire would be wanting to get to the first angel? It has power, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. The Evangelion, their entire makeup and being. They're all based on this, aren't they? That's right. Fifteen years ago, after the events of Second Impact, it was decided the only way to fight the angels would be with the power of an angel. And thus, from this, from Adam, the Evangelion were born. This just can't be real. So what do we do now, Misato? Kaji would ask. Jason? The best thing we can do is keep this between ourselves. Jason would reach into his pocket. He pulled out what appeared to be two silver coins. They almost appeared to be like buttons in size. He would tell each of them to attach it to themselves. Those things are communicators, except they're not connected to any of the main servers. These are used specifically by rangers only. Do the kids have these? No. I've been having them made personally, but I haven't given them to any of the kids yet because I didn't want to drag them into this. Look, I don't know what's going to happen here, and I don't know if this will be breaking any rules or any commandments, but it's obvious that whatever is going on here at the moment, it's not on the up and up. Gendo and the others are all hiding something, and I don't know if that makes them friend or foe. But if worse comes to worse, then the angels and the machines won't just be our enemies anymore, will they? We might end up having to fight Nerve itself. You know, if we have to go down that road, that might end up in treason. Maybe, but this is bigger than all of us. If the angels get their way and third impact happens, from what I'm told, then there's nothing we can do to stop it. If the machines get their hand on that power, then it might as well be the end of the world as well. And then there's Nerve. Who's to say when all this is over, they don't become the next threat to the world? And at that point, with the Evangelion, and everything all at their disposal, then they could have their own army. Exactly. We keep this among ourselves for now, until anything happens in the future, agreed? Everyone would nod their heads as they would all leave in secret. It seemed as though now, the battle lines were being drawn. Not too long after, after going through a few synchronization tests, Toji's time would finally come as everyone was going to be gathered together for the commencement of Ava Unit 3. Everyone would be on standby in the viewing deck as Toji would go into the entry plug before being placed inside Ava Unit 3. Everyone was waiting in case anything happened in particular. Of course, there was no telling when any of the other generals or if anyone else might strike. But of course, the Machine Empire was always waiting always ready for an opportunity. The attack on the second headquarters wasn't by accident. The generals were ready for it, as General Green had been in charge of the operation. Stealing data on Ava Unit 3, he also planned to steal more than that, as he waited in the shadows for his moment. As soon as the experiment got underway and Ava Unit 3 was activated, 
all seemed fine at first until it started to lose control. It got to a point soon where even cutting off its excess power didn't matter. The being within the Ava unit started to go on a rampage. Gendo, who was now in control from base, had seen what was happening and could tell full well what was to come. However, what he was not expecting was what happened next. The cogs would begin to touch down where the experiment was being held and started attacking some of the staff. A few soldiers came into contact with the robotic foot soldiers but were struck down quickly. The rangers sprung into action as they went to go battle against the cogs. However, Gendo would call for Shinji, Rei, and for Asuka to stay back while Kinsuke and Jason had run forward. They had gotten an order to get inside of Ava Unit 0, 1, and 2 in the combat against Ava Unit 3. Shinji couldn't believe what he was hearing from his father. They had tried to remove the entry plug with Toji inside, but they couldn't. He was still stuck within. It was as if the angel itself that was connected to the Ava had trapped him inside. And if things didn't seem worse, a strange grain-like drone began to fly over to Ava Unit 3. It clung itself to its chest and inside. They could just faintly hear the voice of General Green. The General gloated at the fact that he had now been able to compromise and take the Angel for itself. Now weaving its own technology inside of the Evangelion, it started to take control. Until eventually it was a three-way deadlock inside of that beast. Toji fighting for control of itself while the angel was fighting from within to set itself free. And General Green was also vying for a position, a three-way deadlock. Shinji and the others weren't sure of what to do, but they summoned the Super Zeo Zords immediately to form the Super Zeo Megazord, telling Kinsuke to stay inside and to use it as best he could, while they went to go inside the Evangelion as ordered. Jason would go to Pier Midas as soon as he could as he battled against the cogs on the ground. Misato looking on as the others weren't sure of what to do in this moment. Toji was fighting for his life on the inside. The others were going inside of the Ava to try to hold it down. At least that's what they thought they were going to do. However, the moment they got inside, they would be given dark orders. They were told that Ava Unit 3 was to be classified as Angel 13 and was to be destroyed immediately. Jason and the others couldn't believe what they were hearing. They couldn't believe that this was happening at this moment. There wasn't any way, it just couldn't be possible. The others were completely horrified at the idea the idea of having to destroy something, someone that was their own friend. Shinji yelled at his father through the comms to stop it, telling him that they were going to save Toji no matter what, but Gendo didn't want to hear it. He told him that he would take over and do what needed to be done if they disobeyed. Shinji would yell at his father to give him a chance, to just give him one damn chance. Before he could say anything else, Shinji's mind would go completely blank. In that moment, everything would stop. He would get another vision, a vision from the original universe, from the original world of Evangelion. He would see himself inside of Ava Unit 1. He would feel that he didn't have control. He would watch as Ava Unit 1 smashed and ripped apart Ava Unit 3. He could see it as clear as day. Everyone was yelling at Shinji through the cons for him to snap out of it, but he was in a trance. Gendo waited with the others to see what was happening. His son, he seemed to be completely mesmerized, as if he couldn't understand where he was or what was happening at this moment. The only thing that he could see was that world, that damn world, that horrid world. 
he saw himself he saw toji he saw everyone dying around him he, he saw it he saw it and he couldn't unsee it eventually he would stop and pull himself out of it as his father would appear back into the comms once again shinji would look to it staring his father directly in the face Gendo could see within his own son's eyes an unflinching determination. Gendo would tell his son he would get one chance. He would only get one chance. And if it didn't work, the dummy plug would be put in immediately and he would do what needed to be done. Shinji knew now that he only had one opportunity. And with that, they knew what they needed to do. He would yell and get everyone into positions. Jason would be dealing with the cogs down below as he radioed for everyone else to stay calm and to work together. Misato was nervous as well, but she provided aid wherever they needed, allowing for Shinji to lead the team. Shinji would tell them of the plan that he had in mind. He would tell Kinsuke to get out of the Super Zeo Megazord, and he would pick him up in his hand. As he did so, they would all get closer as they would pin and hold down the Evangelion. Ava Unit 3 would be held in place, but they could feel its immense power struggling and pushing them all back. Once they held him down long enough, Kensuke would be placed where the entry plug had been stopped from being released. Using his power Tonfa, he would begin to cut through the cords and go to the entry plug. Ritsuko giving him information along the way on where to cut in order to release the excess valve and not hurt Toji in the process. Toji was fighting to keep control. He was fighting to maintain his own sanity inside of that damn thing. The only thing he could keep in mind was his own sister. The others. Everyone that needed him. He couldn't afford to lose, not now. As he remained calm and tried to fight off the influence of the Evangelion, along with General Green. Eventually he would hear the buzzsaw chopping from the outside, until eventually a hole would be opened and Kinsuke could see what had happened. Toji was stuck by a few cords and wires that was holding him in place in the entry plug. As Kinsuke would burrow his way down, he would cut through until Toji was free. Once he was, he would instantly morph into the Green Zeo Ranger. Using his twin battle axes, the two of them would cut their way out until eventually they were able to get out of Ava Unit 3 entirely. Once they were out safely, they marched and made their way directly towards the Super Zeo Megazord, now getting it back completely operational. The three other Evangelion would let go as Ava Unit 3 would run wild, as if it had no control no mind of its own. All the time that they had taken to do so, their power were running low in the Evangelion, and they were soon going to have to get out of it as soon as possible. They were prepared to eject immediately, and Rei and Asuka were able to do so. Shinji's, however, there was a malfunction in that moment and he couldn't escape. His Ava unit was now running dangerously low on power and there was nothing that he could do in that moment as Ava unit 3 started to beat down upon him. The others would try to hold it back as soon as they could as they got inside of the Super Zeo Megazord, abandoning their Evangelion in a stationary position as they fought back against Ava unit 3. Shinji in the meantime was still trying to get out of his own Ava. As he was stuck within, he could sense something that he hadn't sensed before. Ava Unit 1 was starting to move on its own, of its own free will and of its own accord. Shinji and the others couldn't believe what they were seeing. The others at Nerve couldn't believe what they were witnessing either. Even Kaji, who was looking on from his watermelon patch field as he looked at it, he could only remark in awe as Ava Unit 1 was now starting to be completely released. With no choice, Shinji would morph into the Red Zeo Ranger. Using his power sword, he would cut from the inside, until eventually he forced the hatch open and jumped out in the nick of time. 
The others using the Megazord would catch him in the palm of their hands before lifting him up into the cockpits. Once Shinji was inside safely with the others, they all looked on in horror because what they saw next was nothing short of a true and utter nightmare. Ava Unit 1 had mounted itself upon Ava Unit 3 and it was ripping it apart, tearing it to shreds. It beat it into the ground, smashed its head into the dirt, ripped it limb from limb, and started to eat its innards. As the metal plating that was now around it started to break away, Ritsuko only looked on in even more anguish as she remarked that deep down what was inside of Ava Unit 1 was a completely unfiltered beast. The armor wasn't just used to protect the Evangelion, but it was used to keep it in check, to keep it under their control, but now it was free and it was rampaging all through the state side. As Ava Unit 1 completely decimated Ava Unit 3, Toji couldn't help but feel as if he wanted to throw up. That could have been him. That could have been him inside of that thing if they hadn't gotten the mountain time. In that moment, Ava Unit 1 turned around and it came face to face with the Super Zeo Megazord. As the two behemoths locked eyes with one another, it seemed as though the fated battle was now going to get underway. As it got on all fours and contorted its body in unnatural angles, its mouth graping with blood as it salivated looking as if it wanted to tear them to shreds. Its very presence was unnerving. They were unsure of what they should do in this moment. However, before they could even come to blows, it stopped. It just stopped. It stopped and it laid on the ground, heaving at itself until eventually it had seemed to go dead. Immediate backup would be called and it would be restrained as it was taken back to headquarters. In the meantime, the others went to go find what happened to General Green and his fate, well, there was nothing left of him. Ava Unit 1 made sure of that. Jason and the others were speechless, to say the least. And Misato made sure to get the kids out of there as soon as possible. The committee in the meantime were at their wit's end, unsure of just how the Evangelion had been able to get control of itself. But they were even more curious about what the Ranger powers were capable of as they were privy to the standoff between the Evangelion and the Super Zeo Megazord. They were almost curious about who would win. It wasn't just the Evangelion power that they had to keep their eye on, but it was this Ranger power too. All the same though, they would allow for Gendo to clean up his mess for now, but they would be making sure to keep an even closer eye on him in the future. Once everything was taken care of, the cleanup crew for Nerve would come in immediately and start to clean up what had been left in the disaster. Everyone was given some time off to collect themselves. The kids had decided to just hang out and try to understand what the hell had happened. Asuka was a bit shaken at the idea of what exactly she was piloting. Rei was curious, but she didn't seem entirely unnerved. Even Kensuke seemed to be a bit spook. Toji wasn't entirely sure of how to feel, but he thanked everyone for getting him out of there as soon as they did. And for Shinji, well, he was just left with more questions than answers. They all wondered the same thing, it just was just a matter of was anyone else going to be brave enough to bring it up? Just what the hell were the Evangelion? What on earth had they been piling for all this time? 
whatever they were, they weren't just machines. They were something entirely different. Were they friend or foe? They weren't entirely sure of that either. On the bright side, they talked as though three generals had already been killed, so that only left two more in hiding. Hopefully, if they could bring them down along with the angels, then their fight would be over. At least that's how Asuka viewed it. But for Shinji in the back of his mind, he knew that that couldn't be how it ended. It wouldn't be that simple. The angels in the machine empire, they might not be their only enemies. Far off on the other side of the city, Shinji's teacher Jason echoed that same sentiment as he and Misato were inside of a dive bar. They were waiting until eventually they would meet with Kaji, the three sitting in the far back that was dimly lit. Among the crowd, they didn't really stand out at all as the three were now gathered together. So, you guys finally made it, huh? You enjoyed the show? Whatever that thing was. Misato and Jason both looked at one another. They knew what they were going to finish that sentence. They completely were in utter disarray. You know more, don't you, Kaji? Misato would say as she looked at him. I do. And what exactly would you like to know? Just tell me one thing. Whose side are we supposed to be fighting for at this point? That I can't really answer you, but I do know one thing is for sure. This is going to be some big news, but you should consider this your primary mission above all else. Our primary mission? Yeah, that's right. Those angels... That have all been attacking, trying to get to Nerve? Well, I can't say a whole lot, but I do know one thing. They both leaned in to listen carefully at what Kaji had to say next. Knowing that this could be the fate of the world, all in the palm of his words. Well, you see, if those angels get to Adam third impact will occur and there will be no stopping it. Misato and Jason were completely taken aback by this. They couldn't believe what he had just said. The angels, it wasn't just a random attack. They were trying to get to the first angel for whatever reason. And it was confirmed now if they succeeded, third impact would occur. In the meantime, General Black, along with General Red, as the last two remaining members of the Machine Empire's elite generals, they had received all of the data that they needed, and now it was just a matter of putting their plan into action. Soon, the Evangelion would be under their control. They would harness the power of the Angels as well as stealing the Zeo power that they had been ordered to take. And once they destroyed the rangers in this pathetic world, Lord Draken would be next, as the Machine Empire would take no orders from a flesh being ever again. The power of the gods would be in their hands. As the world was now reaching a new junction. A four-way battle was now being formed as the lines in the sand were now starting to become clear. Nerve, the Zeo Rangers, the Machine Empire, and the Angels, all four were now amassing their forces together. It was now going to be a race who would get to Nerve first? Who would get to Adam first? It would be a four-way deadlock to the finish. 
with the fate of humanity left in its balance. This concludes Neon Genesis Evangelion The Star of Hope Part 6. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay updated on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Because you never know when another video or some news is going to drop. Also, stay tuned because you don't know if another video is going to be coming out today or not. So, that's something that you may be looking forward to, so keep that in mind as well. But anyway, this is going to conclude today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.